All right, everyone, it's time for the occult, video number 295, why I was a Satanist and why I left Satanism. This is an important topic. It's one that I have loosely covered before, in part. I've talked about sort of my religious meanderings over time, from you know, liberal Christian to more religious Christian, to outright atheism, atheistic Satanism, and now into you know the occult, the pagan. Uh, I would say an academic study of everything spiritual and an appreciation for all those spiritual paths. And now I no longer see it as I'm trying to achieve a final destination. Like, hey, I want to find the right religion before I die. I don't give a shit about that. Now I'm, it's literally just about the journey and about promulgating all spirituality because I find it to be number one interesting, number two rewarding, and number three potentially useful. Now, here's why I was a Satanist. When I was younger, I was a liberal Christian. I was raised in a marginally Christian household, the sort where you, you have a Bible in the house, sometimes it's not gathering dust, you pray at night, you know, you say amen and shit like that, and, and, you know, God bless you when you sneeze, and you consider yourself a Christian, you say, yeah, of course, Jesus is my homeboy, but you only go to church two or three times a year, basically. That was the kind of Christian I was for most of my early life, like the first half of my life. For a few years after that, we were more religious, um, and this is partially because my, my mother decided to tag me along with her religious journey. I did genuinely garner more Christian religious beliefs during that period, but I wasn't as literally into it. So, you know, going to church weekly, reading the Bible more, even watching some religious services on TV, which they're all a bunch of prosperity gospel bullshit swindler bitches, but... Uh, you know, you, you're inculcating, you know, Christianity after a certain bizarre and perverted fashion. But anyway, I left this behind around the time I got to college. Now, some people have insinuated that, that I love it when people try to put words in my mouth, thoughts in my head, or actions and deeds into my life, because they're inevitably wrong and don't know what the fuck they're talking about. There are some people that have insinuated that it's, oh, well, Styx went to college and Marxist professors told him Jesus wasn't real, and to get a better grade, he slowly inculcated this belief. That's not what happened. I did it on my own. Uh, partially, it, it was partially I lost, and I used to laugh at the Christians on ICQ chat about this, partially it was seeing, once I got into the real world, the deeds of Christians, once I was exposed to the World Wide Web. Uh, that is, I went into religious chat rooms and I saw the way, the disgrace with which some of these people that are supposedly so holy acted, and it didn't really comport to my view of what a Christian is meant to be, and I'm like, half of you people don't even follow your own fucking commandments. <laughs> Why the fuck should I be part of this? I became an atheist, uh, and, and it had nothing to do with, kind of, if anything, the spiritual side grew more uh, even during the atheistic period because I was taking religion courses because I found them fun. Atheism and I mean uh, Christianity and paganism. Uh, I took a basic course on on Christian theology of some sort. I can't remember exactly the name of it. I took a course on Islam. And by the way, I got swindled by UVM because when I took it, it was a basic level course and an introductory level zero zero one, you know, something like that. Uh, the next year, after I'd already taken the fucking course, they bumped it to an intermediate. So I could have gotten the intermediate credit, but I got basic beginner's credit for the course. I'm like, come on, dude. Uh, now I have to take another one. I even thought about getting a minor in religious studies at one point. Um, to be clear, I, it's not that I was uninterested in learning about the spiritual. I just, I didn't believe in the Jesus, Jesus thing anymore. But then I became a Satanist. And I can't even remember the exact moment at which I first, like, started delving into it. I think it was like, oh, I've heard of this Satanism thing. Yeah, I'm listening to black metal and shit. Get you there. Uh, I'm going to look more into it, and I'm like, yeah, this sounds pretty good. Basically, all it is, in, in the atheistic sense, is atheism with a floor show. That is, it's atheism with robes and spooky stuff. It's basically a fake religion, but it's honest enough to tell you that it's fake. LeVay was, was very flat out that he did not believe in an actual Lucifer, an actual Satan. He was an atheist, and, and very open about the fact that he made a lot of money off of this concept. Other people within Satanism on the atheistic end are very, very honest about the fact that they are essentially business people. They're offering people the same thing religion offers them, which in their mind is a placebo. I don't fully agree with this anymore necessarily, although about organized religion it is inherently true. Uh, but the, but they're, they're open about it. The Church of Satan is a registered corporation that pays taxes. They don't pretend to be a religious order. Uh, it's funny because they still have six-figure membership totals, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's just, it's basically, 
a, a satire. Essentially, it's a satire of religion in general and Catholicism uh, especially. A lot of the mock-up rituals are Catholic in derivation. So the Black Mass, it's kind of structured similarly to the Catholic Mass. Uh, even with a little bit of Latin sprinkled in. Just for show. Sort of like uh, Joseph Smith's Mormonism when he decided to write the Book of Mormon in Old English, despite translating into then contemporary English words. Interesting how nobody caught this at the time. No linguist ever read the book, I guess, at the time. Anyway, I saw Satanism as good in order to purge false guilt and fear. That, that is, religion fills you with fear to keep you an adherent of that religion. It is inevitable. Evolution favors it. Cultural evolution, which overlaps with, with religion, certainly uh, uh, will favor a religion that makes the adherents afraid and offers the adherents a reward upon dying. Those are the two main things that a religion has to have. Uh, the only thing higher would be the religion is demonstrable. Well, in the old days, they used to have miracles. As we slowly explained, most of those miracles were actually chemical chemical interactions, biological things. The, the, you know, the unicorn, actually, that's a rhino, and it doesn't even look similar. How much whiskey did you drink? Stuff like that. Basically, no religion has the demonstrable anymore. You've got the whole God can't heal amputees thing, for example, as a result of this. But I left Satanism because <clears throat> I realized it's nothing more than a stepping stone. That was my stepping stone into a larger world of questioning everything Ness. So not just spirituality, although that's a big chunk of the occult. History is part of it. To be able to question orthodox history and, and look into what would amount to pseudoscience, folklore, to try to explain, to analyze things, to branch out your mind, to go into psychedelics, all of these things are post-Satanism for me. I think that that is valuable. I think that the study of all of these fields is good for a person. I think that if you remain in the same religion you were born into and only read their one religious scripture, you don't even really know your own religion because you have no counterpoint to it. You've never, by the way, become a good adherent of that religion if you believe in convert seeking because how the hell are you supposed to rebuff people who have actually studied all these religions? I've debated numerous people on religion in inherently running roughshod over them because most of the time they just haven't read as much as I have. I mean, it's a, at some point, if you want to be a gung-ho spiritual warrior for Christ, you should probably read the Satanic Bible. Just like I told people when I was an atheist, the first thing you should do is go out and get the King James Version of the Christian Holy Bible. Read it cover to cover. Some of the stuff in there is weird. Well, just at the very least, memorize the weird stuff in order to regurgitate it at people who try to seek to convert you. I uh, admonished him at the time. I tell occultists, yeah, they should still read the Bible. You should read the Book of Mormon. You should read the Quran. You should read the Hadiths. All the Upanishads. It'll take you a while. You should read the Bhagavad Gita. You should read everything you can get a hold of. You should have a whole fucking wall covered with nothing but religion books. I've got like three entire shelves just of spiritual books back in Rutland. I wish I had ten times more. In the future, I'd like to have a little mini library and every volume in there that's not James Blaylock or something similar in the science fiction and fantasy realm, especially if it's steampunk tinged as Blaylock helped to develop, literally, an inventor of that. Doesn't get any credit for it, unfortunately. Uh, his Bologna series, sort of the beginning of this, Among Kills and so forth. Uh, I'm getting off track here because I like Blaylock a lot. Other than that, I'd like to have like seven great big oak shelves bolted to the wall and all of it is like old leather bound books and shit like that from like the 17th century and, and then a bunch of modern stuff. Ultimately, I kind of like the little booklets more because they're actually less accessible. I had scanned a bunch of them from my own collection, including some that aren't available like on archive.org. When I'm back in Rutland, I do intend to do that again. Uh, I'm going to go through and search all those titles because I know there were about a half a dozen that weren't there before. And if I can figure out the ones, I'll, I'll rescan them and then make them available to other people as well. Gratis, of course. Uh, but, you know, I saw Satanism as empty. I saw it as nothing more than a floor show of atheism, but it was good to purge the guilt and fear, and that allowed me to open my mind to all of these other possibilities. It would have been, I, I, I talked about essentially the spiritual journey as this. When you're young, you're, you're like a computer. Think of yourself as a computer. When you're just born, there's not much in it. Over time, society and your parents and your friends and stuff jerry-rig more programs into it. They, they start giving it more bloatware and, and attaching things and peripherals and all this shit. By the time you get to like young adulthood, you're a chimera of these other people. What Satanism does is it allows you to observe 
the ridiculousness of much of that stuff remove what you wish to remove and feel comfortable with removing you know you don't you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater if you don't want to and then you can reprogram yourself now that you're old enough to understand critical thinking the main problem is that a lot of adults don't even understand much about critical thinking satanism is definitely not for everyone nor is the religious experience at large pre-manufactured canned you know uh, uh stamped branded approval religion like you know something you get from joyce meyer or some cleric is actually better for the average person in the masses because they're never going to be able to properly understand certainly not critically analyze and therefore themselves interpret anything larger than that i hate to say it but but it, i mean clearing out your mind is for the elite really I, I know that that sounds a bit cliche or even like well you're trying to be highbrow no really the average person's not great at critical thinking now, and it's no no mental fault of their own. They're not taught it. The parents and their school teachers, the school teachers literally do the opposite. They try to keep you from thinking critically and just memorize things. There's the real problem with society. You want a bunch of uh, free thinkers that'll actually innovate things. You have to do a 180 in our school system. That's about all. Peace out.